Hello, everybody. This is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. This is April the 7th, 2021. Um, I want to welcome everybody to our chat. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please hit, hit the uh, subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get all of our latest uh, news updates. So I wasn't going to come on this early. Uh, I was going to do a report about 7 or 8 o'clock tonight, but uh, we have some breaking news just coming in. Um, it looks like things are kind of escalating out of control. Uh, I'm just going to give you a few headlines and then we'll get into the articles. But the United States and Canada now has uh, put out a note, uh, a NOTAM alert for one year over eastern Ukraine. What that means is they notified pilots in the area to avoid the Ukrainian airspace uh, in this certain area over Ukraine, Belarus uh, for one complete year. So evidently, the United States and Canada think that there's going to be some kind of conflict. That's why they are uh, issuing this alert. Also, the uh, Russian ambassador that left uh, Washington will not be coming back to the United States for any uh, uh, any uh, time uh, coming up. They're going to keep the Russian ambassador in Moscow. He's not returning to the United States. That is not a good sign. Also, we have reports that uh, France right now has uh, issued a, a countrywide nuclear alert. They have uh, just launched 50 uh, of the Mirage fighter jets in a drill simulating a, an, an attack on uh, Russian forces. Uh, also, Russia has just closed the airspace over eastern Ukraine. Uh, like I said, things are looks like they're spiraling out of control. And the uh, mainstream uh, news media is not covering this. And I don't think they're going to cover it until the actual war breaks out. But uh, we've been covering this for about three weeks now on off-grid desert farming. So let's just get to it, uh, into the articles. Uh, this is all, most of these articles are coming from War News 24-7. This is a Greek uh, news website. We also have some stuff from uh, TASS, T-A-S-S, -S, uh, Pravda, and Sputnik, which are all Russian publications. So it says, for lasting conflict, United States of America... In Canada, issue a NOTAM, a NOTAM alert with validity for one year for eastern Ukraine. The Russian ambassador will not be returning to Washington. Deputy Foreign Minister Rabakov announced that the Russian ambassador Antoly Antonov will not return to Washington, D.C. soon, while at the same time, the Americans and Canadians have issued a NOTAM alert due to the threat of military activity in eastern Ukraine. It says this is extremely bad news. Uh, the deputy uh, uh, ambassador said, it is not a question in the, of the coming days we will decide when he will return depending on the steps Washington will take. Something visible and observable uh, they will have to do before the ambassador is returned to Washington. It says Washington, the Russian ambassador, will not return for a long time because of the Ukraine situation. So based on the escalation in Ukraine, we will wait a long time for the return of the Russian ambassador to the United States. By contrast with President Trump, President Biden intends to hold Russia accountable for his imprisonment and a, an alleged uh, poisoning. They're talking about that, uh, that Russian that was supposedly poisoned by Russia. Uh, so on the NOTAM alert, that's N-O-T-A-M, notification of pilots, it said will be valid uh, until a year. What is impressive about this NOTAM uh, issued by the Americans and Canadians because it, its validity starts on April the 2nd, 2021 and runs through April the 2nd on 2022. Now, usually when they issue a NOTAM alert, it's only for like a day or maybe a week. Now, this is very uh, unprecedented what we're seeing now. They issued this for a whole year. So I don't know if they expect this war to go on a whole year. But um, like I said, if this thing goes nuclear very quickly, it's not going to last a year, folks. I mean, you might get a week out of it. Um, so this is the actual statement. Um, I have a picture of it here. I'm going to leave all these links in the description box. I really urge you to check the links out. Uh, this is the official from the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA. This is the Russian-Ukraine escalating border tensions alert uh, to the pilots in that area. So um, a lot of people said they have trouble translating. So when you click on these links, let me give you some instruction. When you click on these links to this Greek website, 
there's going to be a little square box that opens up in the right hand corner at the top of the page and it says uh, Greece or English. So you want to press the English button and Google will translate the article and the web page for you. Now, if you don't do that, uh, it's all going to look Greek to you. Uh, that's a joke. It, it is in Greek. So unless you translate this through Google Translate, you won't be able to read these articles. So um, I'm looking at the uh, the FAA warning right now. It's it, it's like three pages long, but they're explaining uh, uh, what this alert covers and, and uh, specifically uh, what areas they cover. It says um, it says on April the second, a U.S. C-17A Globemaster uh, flew uh, flew into Kiev from Ramstein Air Base in Germany. On April fourth, another C-17 Globemaster three from the United States landed in. Louis, uh, that's L-V-I-V. I, I have no idea how to pronounce that. That's L-V-I-V, Livy. Uh, the C-17A Glowmaster can carry 102 soldiers and 77 tons of cargo. So there's been three major uh, Glowmaster uh, C-17 cargo planes to land uh, in Ukraine in the last three or four days, along with that huge ship that unloaded all that equipment. So NATO, United States, uh, is has a military pipeline now uh, of arms and troops uh, going into Ukraine. So, like I said, I don't think this uh, is going to be a local conflict. I think this is going to escalate very quickly, and I don't, I don't even know if it's going to even be conventional. Now, what the United States and NATO might do uh, would be try to uh, take out the Russian forces before they invade, go ahead and, and launch uh, tactical nuclear bombs on them on the border of Ukraine uh, before they even invade. I don't know what's going to happen, folks, but I'm bringing you the breaking news. It does look like it is uh, starting to escalate out of control. Uh, and for some reason, the American news media is ignoring this story. And all they want to do is push this. You know, they just they want to push that and make sure you're wearing your face diaper. So um, anyway, let's keep on going. That's one story. Um, this is another. Um, Okay, this is another article right here. It takes me a few minutes because I have to also press the English translate button. It says NATO, uh, Russia says NATO forces have, has entered Kiev. Moscow closes the airspace of eastern Ukraine. Thousands of Ukrainian reservists flock for ranking. Now, I came on yesterday and I told you that Ukraine has activated or put out a war alert that they're calling up hundreds of thousands of soldiers and people to join up right now uh, for this war that's fixing to break out. So they put out a, a whole country mobilization uh, alert in Ukraine. And uh, this thing is, is not going to fade away, folks. This is the real deal. You're witnessing history right now on the verge of being made. So also I have uh, have some breaking news. Uh, one of our subscribers, a couple people have said this, that also Russia uh, is um, is mobilizing um, some of their forces and my I don't know what's happening here my screen is um, yeah it says my battery's running low here that's all I need is a technical problem right here when I'm trying to do a update um, <laughs> mm. I, you got another plug that you can plug this one in um, uh, hold on folks I, that's not going to work. Um, let me uh, let me see. I'm going to have to unplug this one. I don't know how this is going to react, but I have to charge this other. I'm using two computers, so one of my battery is running low. This other screen is going to go kind of dark on me, so I can't see what I'm doing. But at least we'll charge the batteries here. So, um, Adrian said I should have had it plugged up all morning, like she told me, and then we wouldn't have had a problem, right? Always got to listen to the wife. So uh, let me read you a little bit about this, if I can get on the article. He says, the Russian-Ukraine conflict is escalating into an uncontrollable escalation as Moscow officially speaks of NATO troops on Ukrainian territory and next to the line of contact in Donbass, while noting that there is an increased alliance activity in the Black Sea. So Russia, about a week, I reported on this, warn NATO that if NATO sends forces into Ukraine, then Russia will respond 
uh, very harshly to that because uh, once NATO enters this war, folks, then it is a World War III. It's going to be a World War III situation. That's why uh, the NATO forces have been alerted in Poland and Lithuania, and now France is uh, activating uh, their country and getting ready. So I also have other news, folks. Uh, Turkey now is saying that Israel and Greece and France are on the verge of attacking Turkey now since Turkey is moving away from NATO. There's so many war fronts now that are beginning to open up. China also is getting ready to invade Taiwan, as I have been reporting. When this thing blows, folks, it's going to be a, a, an earthquake you know, on the earth. I mean, you're going to have so many war fronts opening up on the same time. But it, like I said, it could be hours away or we could be a couple of weeks away. But from the news coming in today, I don't know if it's going to last a week. So let's uh, let me read this. Uh, keep on reading. Uh, evidently, uh, NATO has also sent some extra ships into the Black Sea. Uh, they had a NATO drill about a week ago with over 18 NATO warships in the Black Sea. And the Black Sea is like the Gulf of Mexico to Russia. I mean, what the Gulf of Mexico is to the United States, the Black Sea is like that to Russia. So we have warships right off the coast of Russia in the Black Sea. That's like having war, Russian warships in the Gulf of Mexico. So you can see how critical the situation is right now. He says, Moscow seems to have sent the last warning calling for destabilization of the whole of eastern Ukraine because of the NATO troops. He said, it is no coincidence that the map came out and in essence shows that Ukraine is uh, being divided. In addition, Moscow, according to the last minute information, alleged that a NOTAM uh, alert, which it closes the national airspace of eastern Ukraine, uh, something that is only uh, done if uh, you know a country is fixing to use, utilize that airspace for military operation. He said, for the first time in a long time, the international news agency, namely the AFP, went uh, to promoted positions of Ukraine in Donbass and broadcast a climate position. Uh, the announcement of Russia says so specifically the Russian Foreign Ministry of Affairs has stated Kiev continues to transfer troops to the con uh, contact line in Donbass and violates the ceasefire. At the same time, there is an increase in the activity of NATO armed forces on the territory of Ukraine and in the Black Sea region near the Russian border. He said in 2000. Uh, uh, what's it say? In April 7th, 2021, joint exercises have been planned uh, on Ukrainian territory with NATO member countries. So NATO now are launching joint drills with Ukrainian soldiers. Russia has just stated this. It says the activities of the foreign intelligence services in Ukraine along uh, the border with Russia, as well as on the contact line in Donbass, has now increased. They, they are using aircraft and radio electronic media. In addition, there is accounting and financial support for the Ukrainian armed forces from NATO member countries, such as the provision of lethal weapon systems and training by NATO officers. So this, is, uh, this information is being put out uh, by Russian foreign ministry. He says, we call on NATO and Ukraine to immediately cease military preparations and escalation in Donbass and to refrain from actions that could destabilize the eastern Ukraine. So Russia is giving NATO and the United States their last warning. I believe this is the last warning before all hell breaks loose in Ukraine, folks, and probably around the world. Like I said, I don't, I don't think this is going to be a conventional war, maybe an hour or two, but Russia has warned NATO over two weeks ago that, that, that if they get involved, then Russia will take every uh, military option that, that they need to do to protect their country. About a month ago, the Russian generals came forth and they said that if any ballistic missiles are fired toward the Russian territory, they would immediately launch their nuclear weapons uh, on, that, uh, on that position. And uh, if it's NATO involved, they will also launch on NATO positions. Iran came out a few days ago and said, if this war breaks out in Ukraine, Iran will launch missiles at NATO bases in Europe. China has came out and said that once this war starts, they have a secret agreement with Russia, they will invade Taiwan. 
Right now, off the coast, uh, off the uh, coast of the Philippines, China has amassed over 200 ships. They call them fishing vessels, but uh, the Philippine president said they're not fishing vessels. They're maritime patrol uh, boats from China. And I think that's an invasion force from the Philippines because we have a big, huge naval base in the Philippines, folks. So I think all the chess pieces right now uh, are being moved into place. And I think this war, we could be ours, if not a few days from this thing kicking off. Um, so let me keep on going. Uh, right now, President of Ukraine, Zelensky, is meeting with NATO military uh, chairman, uh, Sir Stuart Peach. So they're having emergency meetings uh, in uh, uh, Ukraine. And also, this is the latest tweet. It says, it seems Russia has issued a Nodham alert for the area of airspace under uh, Ukraine jurisdiction. 2,000 kilometers, the Russian-Ukraine front. According to Ukrainian sources, Russia has expanded the conflict line, which now extends over 2,000 kilometers. At the same time, according to the OSCE, Russia has transported 87,000 troops, uh, 1,100 tanks, 400 M uh, MLRS units, 26 TOMAs, and 1,170 artillery units to the border with eastern Ukraine. That's not a small force. It says violent clashes are now taking place along the entire length of the Donetsk area, especially at the airport uh, uh, and Lukanesk area. The area is being pounded by both artillery and mortars. Now, a couple days ago, maybe it was even yesterday, I posted a video of the beginnings of this, um, of this war. You can hear the mortar rounds and these uh, howitzer missiles going off in the background. Uh, it says a few hours ago, Ukraine began military exercises in Donbass right next to the line of contact. Also, the New York Prepper. I want to give a shout out to the New York uh, Prepper channel. Uh, he is also covering this uh, this escalating crisis on his channel. So be sure to go over and check his channel out. Uh, Ukraine calls up reserve troops. See the pictures. Ukraine, as we informed yesterday, has called up the entire reserve of the Zaporizhia area in the Kurtzon regions for classification in the territorial defense uh, brigades. The reserves uh, man the 110th and 124th defense brigades in Ukraine. These units have zones of responsibility on the border with Crimea, covering the coast of Ukraine and repelling amphibious actions, uh, protection of critical infrastructure such as bridges, uh, public buildings, and sabotage says each Ukrainian defense brigade consists of 3,000 men and six brigades. Now, I also said that um, Russia, when this war starts, intends to take over uh, Maripol and the Odessa area. They're going to cut off Ukraine from the Black Sea region. They're going to uh, take the entire uh, land that Ukraine has on the Black Sea. So uh, Ukraine will not have any more access to the Black Sea area. Also, Russia plans on dividing Ukraine up uh, where the uh, Russian speaking population uh, is and, and annexing that into Russia. So like I said, I have a, a, a bad feeling that NATO is going to join in. And if that happens, uh, this is going to quickly escalate into a nuclear confrontation. Um, so let me go to, on to another article. Give me a, just a second while this uh, this article translates. All right, now this was a, this, this came in a couple hours ago. We were out shopping at Walmart. We just got home. It says Ukraine brings terror. France and Russia has put their nuclear strike forces on high alert. France launches 50 Rafael Mirage uh, fighter jets in the air, and Russian ICBM uh, missiles are in the air being tested. So Russia now is test launching some of their ICBMs. Uh, so let's go ahead and read this article. Uh, this is the latest breaking news. So NATO Germany, NATO uh, consists of France, Germany, England, uh, Australia, uh, United States, Canada, a lot of different countries belong to NATO. So if this war breaks out, all these NATO countries are targets for Russian missiles. Also, every NATO base uh, in Poland and Lithuania, that the United States has placed these NATO troops, they're also going to be a target for Russian missiles. It says, for the first time in several years, France and Russia has simultaneously 
uh, alerted their nuclear forces as U.S. strategic B-1 Lancer bombers flew over the Aegean Sea in a strike simulation against Russia. I also going to report on that. United States has launched two B-1B Lancer bombers from the United States last night. They flew over the uh, Aegean Sea on a practice run, launching their missiles into Russia. This is all going on right now, real time. Uh, this is not a drill, and this is not uh, fake news, folks. This is happening, but the, the world uh, mainstream news media is failing to report on this. I'm only getting most of this news from foreign news sources, Greek news sources, Israeli news sources, Russian news sources, uh, Al Jazeera Muslim news sources. They're all reporting on this, but the United States, for some reason, uh, doesn't want to report what's happening. Uh, the French nuclear power is on standby. France has put his nuclear power strategic arsenal on standby by taking off at least 50 aircraft in an ASMP missile uh, attack simulation. They call it an ASMP. The nuclear strike uh, force is codenamed POKER. The French generals chose the exercise to take place right now in the midst of a Russian Ukrainian crisis. France has mobilized the Raphael and Mirage fighter jets, uh, 2000 N fighters, flying tankers, the WC 135, and an A330 MRTT as well, and as well as AWAC E3 Century uh, aircraft all at one time. So you probably got about 70 French aircraft in the air right now. Since France's nuclear formation took off from northern Brittany, flew through the Pyrenees Mountains and made a virtual launches over the Mediterranean Sea. As mentioned, the exercise usually takes place at night, but this time it took place during the day. Okay, on this, on this uh, article that I'm reading, they have videos of this. So you're going to have to go to the article. You're going to have to click on and watch the videos yourself. It says, which aircraft did France uh, use in this exercise? Uh, three Boeing C-135FR. Uh, tell, tell call sign 735, 739, and 740. One Boeing E3C, uh, I think that's a uh, Sentry plane. One Airbus A332 MRTT, 30 Raphael fighter jets, an unknown uh, amount of Mirage 2000D fighter jets, and an unknown amount of uh, Mirage 2000 uh, S fighter jets. He says a total of 50 French aircraft took off from bases throughout France, flew over the Atlantic Ocean and then split and entered the Mediterranean Sea. They performed aerial defense drilling exercises and then delivered their nuclear cargo by virtually hitting targets. They actually didn't launch any bombs, but they're doing a practice run right now. It says Russian strategic forces are also on standby and high alert. Russia has deployed all of its strategic forces. Uh, did you hear what I said? Russia has deployed all of its ground strategic forces. According to the announcement, the personnel and units of the missile formations are on high alert. As part of the nuclear preparedness exercises, the Yars intercontinental ballistic missiles of the OMAS formation will be tested. Command and readiness exercises KSHU will be conducted uh, with the Barnu uh, Atil missile formation, that's A-L-T-A-I uh, missile formation. After the completion of the exercises in the Atil region, there will be an exercise in the Nova Brisky missile, missile formation. At the same time, readiness tests will be carried out in other formations, such as the Bol Bolo Gov missile formation in the Tiver region. Time support, security patrols, chemical and biological protection will also be checked at this time. Finally, there will be a sabotage exercise by the strategic missile forces. A total of 3,000 units of equipment, 15,000 Russian personnel, 80 units of the land strategic forces will take part in this preparedness exercise. And they also have videos of this exercise going off. So let's, uh, let's keep on going going to take me a second just to translate this. All right, this is about the B-1 Lancers. It says, um, uh, it says Greece involved in Russia, Ukraine crisis. 
pair of B-1 Lancer strategic bombers flying over the Aegean Sea. So uh, let me read this. It says, unprecedented U.S. show of force as two U.S. strategic B-1 Lancer bombers took off from South Dakota, traveled nearly 12,000 nautical miles, and flew over the Aegean Sea today. This move is directly linked to the developments in Ukraine because there is no other reason for this business to happen at this time. Do Americans know that the Russian operations are uh, against Ukraine are imminent? At the same time, according to the uh, ITAL mid radar, uh, Greek radar is carrying out a mission in the Mediterranean Sea. The Greek early warning aircraft has the ability to monitor targets at a distance of 480 to 520 kilometers. So the Greeks, uh, the Greek now in France and Israel are all working together. Uh, so I'll read you that article in a minute, but let me finish this one. It says the two B-1 Lancer bombers took off from Ellingsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota and were accompanied by two American F-16 fighter jets over Europe until they arrived in Greece. During the mission, the aircraft traveled 12,000 nautical miles and the B-1Bs returned to the base on the same day. Note that there was a KC-135R Strato tanker uh, and an S or 58003 air supply tanker over Denmark in the North Sea. So they had uh, their refueling tanker aircraft flying behind them. This was a demonstration of power to Russia. So this is an unprecedented move by the United States in the midst of a crisis in Ukraine just to see what uh, weapons they carry in the current U.S. move will be understood. It should be noted that the U.S. strategic bombers can carry both the AGM 15HC long-range anti-ship missile, the LASROM missile intended for surface vessels, and the AGM 158 joint uh, air-to-surface standard missile, the JASM, uh, which is the Virgin ER, has a range of 1,000 kilometers. Most likely, the U.S. strategic bombers carried out a virtual bombardment with cruise missiles against Russian bases in Crimea in the midst of a Russian-Ukrainian crisis. So um, Russia would probably shoot these uh, airplanes down before they got uh, anywhere near. But some of these missiles on the airplane, they do have over a thousand mile range. Now, Russia has the the S-400 uh, and the S-500 missile uh, defense systems in the Crimea area, but also if uh, United States launched uh, this attack on Russia in Crimea, then you can look for nuclear missiles heading toward the United States. Russia, as I have stated, says that any launch of any ballistic missile toward their territory, Russia will take that as a nuclear strike and they will immediately launch their nuclear missiles in retaliation. So if America has the balls to do this, if NATO wants to poke that bear, then I think the United States uh, is going to cease to exist as a, as a nation if this happens, folks. And Joe Biden made a call to Zelensky a couple days ago. Our defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, had made a call to Ukraine defense minister pledging America's 100% support. Also, the NATO uh, head of NATO, Jen Sullenberg, has also pledged Ukraine their support. So it does look like NATO is going to be involved in this war. It does look like this war is going to be kicking off very shortly. I don't have a date for you. I'm just bringing you the latest information. But from all indications, everybody's got their finger on the trigger. And if the United States does a preemptive launch on Russian forces, then it's on, folks. You better have some emergency plans. You better have, uh, like I told you last night, have you a room prepared in your house? Go buy some plastic, uh, uh, plastic, you know, roll of plastic, some duct tape. Go to Walmart, get you a very nice air filter for like a hundred bucks, so you can filter the air out. Uh, get you some bottled water. Get you a little porta potty set up. Things are getting serious. This is not fake news. I'm not doing this for views, people. I don't need views. I'm not making any money off of YouTube. I'm doing this to inform you that Jesus Christ is coming back. World War III is about to break out, and if you die in a nuclear attack, if you don't know Jesus, you're going to hell, folks. Time is growing short. Time is very critical right now. The, the American news media might not even report this till it's too late. 
I don't know why they're not picking this up because things are escalating very quickly. Let me go on uh, reading this article. We've got a couple more articles. Um, give me just a second. It takes a second for this to uh, translate into English. Okay, this is uh, this uh, news is coming from uh, Turkey. It says Tur Turkey, Turkish fear is Israel is preparing for war against us. Ankara worried about large scale Israeli exercises in Cyprus. Now this is breaking news, folks. Israel is going to do their largest military exercise outside of Israel. They're going to be transferring tanks and troops to Greece to practice uh, war games in Greece. Also, France is going to be taking part in this. So let me go ahead and, and bring you this. Israel never sends their troops out of their country, folks. This is unprecedented for Israel to send uh, tanks and, and their fighting forces to another country. It says the Turks are afraid of a joint attack by Greece and Israel on a wide front from uh, Evros to Cyprus, as they characteristics, characteristically say that Israel is preparing for war in a course against them. Uh, Turkey and Israel does not get along. Very good. The country of Turkey and Israel. Turkey uh, is one of the countries where the Muslim Brotherhood is very active, along with Iran. It says the eastern Mediterranean, where successive exercises are being conducted, is becoming a training ground for Israel. Israel is preparing for the most comprehensive exercises in the so-called war months area. The Turks refer to the largest Israeli exercise abroad which has ever taken place. That's what I just said. This is the largest Israeli uh, exercise that has taken place off of Israeli soil, uh, which they will practice for a month. So Israel is going to be practicing for a whole month in Greece. I think World War III, we're on the verge of it, folks. All these chess moves being made right now. Also, I'm going to report uh, in a few minutes, there has come to light a uh, Jewish rabbi in Israel that now uh, uh, some of the Jewish rabbis are saying this is the Messiah, this is their Mashiach, has been revealed finally. So I'm going to report on that a little bit later. All this is going on right at the same time, folks. This is crazy, the amount of information coming in right now. So let me keep on going. I've got some more articles for you. Now, I posted on this uh, last night. Um, let me see. Now, United States Pentagon, they contacted the Russian uh, military yesterday, and they asked for clarification from Russia on their troop movements. And uh, let me read you that article. So Russia has denied any information. They're not telling the Pentagon anything. So let me go ahead and read you this article here. I think this is it. Um, here it is. This is from the Russian news agency TASS, the Russian news agency TASS. He says, Pentagon urges Russia to clarify troop movements and tensions on the Ukrainian border. Uh, the Russian uh, uh, military spokesman evaded a direct response to a question of whether, in Washington's opinion, Russian troops could, de could be deployed in Ukraine. So let me go on down. Like I said, I will be leaving, leaving all these links in the description box. Uh, Russian's intentions with regard to its troop movements on the border with Ukraine remain unclear to the United States, and Washington calls upon Moscow to specify them more clearly, Department of Defense spokesman John Kirby told reporters on Thursday. Uh, I mean on Tuesday. The intent is not... Uh, completely clear, and I believe our State, State Department colleagues yesterday called on Russia to make their intentions known. He said, "We continue to seek Russian. Uh, we continue to see Russian forces arrayed along the border with Ukraine in Crimea, specifically." Kirby added, "It is also difficult for us to speak to the intent right now. It is concerning, and we will continue to monitor it." Uh, said he evaded a direct response to a question of whether, in Washington's opinion, uh, Russian troops could be deployed in eastern Ukraine. So I have also reported in the last couple of days, Russia is preparing 30,000 paratroopers, folks, 30,000 paratroopers 
uh, getting ready to uh, paratroop uh, behind enemy lines in Ukraine. This is all going on now. Some estimates Russia has activated over 250,000 other troops. Uh, this is not a drill. This is the real deal, folks. We have had uh, warning after warning, uh, and it never came to anything. But this is, the, I think, the real deal right now uh, from all the news being reported. Uh, let me keep on going with the articles. Um, this is about China. Uh, Beijing accelerating the timeline for possible invasion of Taiwan, experts warn. The Chinese communist regime is accelerating its plan to invade Taiwan, and exports, experts warn as Beijing ratchets up military movers against the island. Now, about a week ago, Chinese launched over 20 planes into Taiwan's airspace, uh, threatening, you know, a show of force to Taiwan. So the United States has already war gamed this out. They've already did simulations, and every simulation that the United States uh, had uh, fighting China, trying to protect Taiwan, we lost the war, folks. There's no way that we could send enough troops and ships into that theater to prevent Taiwan from, uh, or China from taking Taiwan. It says 20 Chinese military aircraft, including four nuclear-capable H-6K bombers, 10 J-16 fighter jets, and two Y-8 anti-submarine warfare aircraft, and a KJ-500 airborne early warning and control aircraft entered Taiwan's air defense identification zone on March the 26th. I covered that according to Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense. This was the large, largest incursion ever reported by the Defense Ministry in Taiwan. He says Taiwan uh, ADIZ, located adjacent to the island's territorial airspace, is an area where incoming planes must identify themselves to the island's air traffic controller. The incursion has capped off a significant increase in the hostility by Beijing against Taiwan since 2020. Uh, Taiwan's President T. Uh, Ling Wing, re-elected last January, has taken a hard line against threats posed by the Chinese Communist Party, while the island has deepened its cooperation with the United States, prompting the regime to escalate its warmongering toward the island. So uh, China also right now has one of their aircraft carrier strike groups the Leilong, or Leiling, however you pronounce that, right off the coast of Taiwan right now. We also have one of our aircraft carrier, the uh, USS Eisenhower, about 100 miles away. So all the places, our pieces are coming into place, but uh, I do believe that if I, as keep, I am keep stating that um, if NATO gets involved in this war, then it's going to escalate uh, very quickly into a world war. So let's keep on going with the articles. I got just a few more. Um, this is from uh, Sputnik News. Sputnik News, wrong signal. Chinese military accuses the United States of damaging regional stability amid the Taiwan spat. Chinese and U.S. naval forces has carried out dueling aircraft carrier drills in the waters off of China's coast in recent days, with Washington posturing to stand up to Beijing's aggression, while the People's Republic has told America to stay out of its internal affairs. Um, so I reported on this the other day. I will leave these links in the description box. So let's keep on going. Um, I'm just looking down the um, the articles. Uh, now, Russia is testing their hypersonic missiles also. It says two down, more to go. With hypersonic weapons already in the field, Russia looks to improve uh, their features. So let me go down here. It says hypersonic weapons are a top priority for the Russian government. And a, a defense analyst with a state-run think tank told Defense News with Two now uh, fielded, the country is looking to further improve their technology. So Russia now has uh, four hypersonic weapons that says that two of them are fielded, but the United States has no functioning hypersonic missiles. So all this is going on right now, folks, 
And let me read you a little bit about this. Um, I don't have it up, but um, I don't even have the piece of paper. Anyway, I'll probably just do another video on this rabbi in Israel. But there's a rabbi now that uh, the, the videos are going viral of this 30-year-old rabbi uh, in Israel that they're claiming is going to be the new Messiah of the Israel. Um, uh, I'll do a follow-up report on that, but uh, I, don't think he, I don't think he's the one. Uh, I did a lot of videos on the Antichrist, but I think this is just another wannabe, but we'll have to see what happens. But a lot of things are going on, folks. Um, I'm going to plug this back in so I can see my screen. But, uh, you know, it could break out at any time. I really wasn't prepared to do an update. I went ahead and got on and rushed today because uh, all this breaking news. Let me see if I have any more articles, but I think that's all we have today. But as you can see, things are escalating very quickly. And uh, I don't know why the American news media is not reporting. But Ukraine has a countrywide call up of reserves. Uh, we also have one of our subscribers that is in contact with a Russian soldier. Uh, and he said he's been called back to base, military base. So evidently, Russia is calling up reserves also. They're pulling forces and tanks all the way from Siberia and the Norway uh, theater and rushing them down to the Crimea area. Like I said, I don't know when this war is going to break out. It does look like that this war will be inevitable. Uh, it does look like that NATO is moving forces into Ukraine against Russia's will. And it doesn't look like this is going to be contained in Ukraine right now. I don't know if you guys have um, have any more information. If you do, uh, please email me at offgriddesertfarming uh, at yahoo.com, offgriddesertfarming uh, at yahoo.com. I want to apologize when I'm doing uh, my reports. I do not read what's going on in the chat. So if I ignore you, you think I'm ignoring you, I'm not because I can't read the chat and read my articles at the same time and concentrate on what I'm doing. So I usually go back and I read all the chat later. So, uh, you know, Adrian is monitoring the chat right now, but I don't even look at it because I, you know, I can't do, you know, three things at once. I can't read your articles and do my reporting at the same time. So I'm sorry about that, but I do want to, um, I, I do want to thank everybody for showing up today. Um, you know, like I said, this is an ongoing situation, and uh, we'll see how uh, what's going on. Adrian, do you want to say something? Okay. So, yeah, um, that's the latest breaking news. Russia did. I reported on that about, uh, I think it was even yesterday. Russia put their entire uh, nuclear forces on alert, and I, I thought I had that article explaining all of that, um, if I can find it, but it tells all the drills. Uh, that Russia is doing. Um, it was unbelievable, but Russia has put their entire nuclear forces on alert. They have pulled all their mobile uh, ICM, ICBMs. They have been deployed in their ready positions. Now, when Russia does uh, strategic actions like that, they take them out of their bunkers uh, where they're stored and they go to their launch positions, their pre planned launch positions. And they're ready. That's what the highest uh, a strategic nuclear alert means, that they, they, they deploy to where they're going to be when war starts. Uh, they do this all the time in drills, but I don't think this is a drill. I think this is the real deal this time. And Russia is ready. At the first sign of a missile coming into Russian territory, folks, I don't think they're going to wait uh, too long to launch their missiles because they can't afford to wait. Because if their missiles are taken out by NATO missiles, then that missile is no good. So they have to launch before NATO takes their missiles out. You see how that works. Whoever launches first gets the first hit in. You know, you want to get the first strike in because the second strike, you know, that's a, a, a retaliatory deal. But whoever gets the, uh, the jump on the other guy is going to have the advantage in the war because if you can take out bases, if you can take out airplanes on the airfields, if you can take out silos before they can launch their missiles, then uh, you can prevent you know, them from launching. So this thing is, uh, like I said, it could escalate. I don't think it's going to wind down. I think you're going to see as the hours and the days progress, uh, this thing could pop off at any time. 
But um, I had a couple of sources the other day that they're say they're saying that May around the end of April, the end of May is when this thing is planned on uh, really kicking off because they said in Ukraine right now it's winter time or that's what that what they're reporting and the ground is very wet. So they want to wait till the ground is dried up a little bit so these heavy tanks can have an easier uh, you know, movement. They can move on the ground a lot easier in dry conditions instead of uh, bogging down in the wet soil. So that is what I'm being told that at, like in two to three weeks before uh, May at, at the end of April. But if this thing keeps escalating like it is now, just in the last few hours, then this thing could go at any time. But like I said, just be prepared, folks. Be prepared physically. Uh, have enough food, water, uh, bottled water. Go to Walmart. Get you a HEPA air filter. They cost anywhere from uh, $80 to $150. Bucks. Uh, we have one sitting in the room. It filters the air out and has a UV light. Uh, make you a room in your house where uh, you got your bottled water stored, a porta potty if you have to stay in there. Uh, if you're close uh, to an area, uh, a military base or some kind of strategic location, then, uh, you know, have a way out, have a plan. Nuclear war doesn't last too long. It's very, uh, very short. Uh, before we go, I wanted to read you a prophecy. I almost forgot to do this, but our brother Leland Jones, Leland Jones has a channel. He has over 30,000 subscribers but he dives into the book of Revelation. He dives into the scripture and he uh, goes into detail uh, more than about any Bible teacher I have ever seen. So he emailed me a prophecy that God had given a pastor back in 2007 about the Ukraine war, folks. And I'm going to read that to you. Uh, this is um, this is very eye opening that this prophecy uh was given back in 2007. So let me go ahead and read you this prophecy that uh, Leland Jones has sent me. It says, I found this prophecy and here's the shorthand version. Prophecy to Pastor Philip Barnett and Azoff Mina, uh, the 17th, uh, uh, on January the 17th, 2007. The fate of Russia, Ukraine, the US and many European countries. He says, Russia and eastern Ukraine and their allies are attacking Israel. The word, a world follows what Russia bear is about to do, Ezekiel 38. It says, Philip Barnett says, January 17, 2007. The Holy Spirit exhorted me to pray such a prayer. Lord, show me what is to come. Show me what will happen. And I had a dream and went by bus to an area of uh, churvelously oblast. I think that's an area in Ukraine. The bus departed for a small town and stopped east. As I saw a mountain in the shape of a missile, there was snow at the top of the mountain, and all and all this was on the edge of the city in the forest where green trees grow. The mountain looked like a volcano, and when I saw it, I thought, there is no such mountains in Ukraine. Suddenly, in a dream, I remembered that I had been here before many years ago on this same road, and I saw the same mountain many years back. Back then, this mountain was so much farther from the city than it was now, and it seemed much closer and much bigger. The town was a tourist town, and I was shocked that people didn't pay attention to the fact that this mountain erupts soon. And I knew that if it broke out, all who were in the city would die, and the whole city would be destroyed within a radius of 100 kilometers. Now, in this vision, God has given him the cities in America that Russia is going to nuke. So I'm going to name those cities a little bit later. So listen to this prophecy, folks. This was given to this pastor back in 2007. What is happening right now in Ukraine? This is going to blow your mind. He says, Azov Mina says, I looked at this mountain and suddenly I was taken as if taken closer to this mountain a few miles away. And I followed it and suddenly I brought back. I was brought back on the bus. Another sign that this happened in Ukraine, I turned to my roommate and asked, what is the name of this mountain? He, he replied, Azov Mina. And the second time he answered, Azov Mina. And he said it accurately. I had never heard that word before and I couldn't understand what it meant, but the name of the mountain was repeated twice. 
Uh, in Genesis 41, 32, it says the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice, a sure sign that the word is was given in a dream that is true, and God will soon fulfill the dream. He says, I went back to the mountain again and started going to the bus door, and I saw that I was on the bus again and looked at the mountain, and I felt I had to look east, and when I looked, I saw another mountain east of the first and a little to the south that looked like the first. Then I saw the third mountain, similar to the first and second, and then the fourth, and it's still further south. It says, I looked even further to the right and saw the fifth mountain, and that it was even further east. These mountains begin to form an arc, a crescent shape. I looked south and a little east, and I saw the sixth mountain, similar to the previous one. And then the seventh, a little further uh, down the line to the north. And then I saw the eighth, and they stood in an arc like a crescent. And they were all like a missile. And I wanted to take my whole family out of there for it seemed that they would all soon erupt. He says, I sat on the bus and, and turned around and headed east. And on the right, I saw monuments. Um, so let me just uh, click on down. A lot of you guys are getting bored, but let me get to the good part. It says, Azov Mina means the Sea of Azov. So right off the coast of Russia, there's the Black Sea and there's the Sea of Azov. So he's talking about that area. So this guy that had this vision, this dream, he didn't know about that area in Ukraine. God showed him these uh, these places in Ukraine and gave him the names of the places. He says Azov Mina means the Sea of Azov to the border with Belarus along the Depner River, the D-N-I-E-P-E-R, Depner River. All areas of eastern Ukraine to, will be destroyed. I prayed and understood it is much easier to transport tanks than to go to Israel with them. But why the Depner? Why the Russians have the Volga River? But the Lord replied that they needed the Depner because they can uh, the tanks can be transported across the Belarusian uh, bridge, uh, you know, with army technology. He said the destruction of eastern Ukraine. He says, I got up and recorded everything the Lord spoke to me, and God showed me exactly where the missiles will fall in Ukraine. He said, the first to fall will be in Kiev, the second north of the Palaka region, the third falls in Kharkov, the fourth uh, to northern Donetsk regions, the fifth to Lukanesk, the sixth to Odessa, the seventh to the Kershon region, and the eighth to the south of the Zaparat region. Now, you have to remember, this dream was given to him back in 2007. He didn't know anything in the future, what's going on right now. So this is kind of explaining what the events happening right now are going to take place. He said, this is what I saw in a vision. The whole of eastern Ukraine will perish. All what is on the other side of the Deprina. Five of Ukrainian major cities will be destroyed. When I saw the monuments on the bus, God said, Jerusalem will be a cup of trembling and all who oppose it, a cup of trembling. Also, Western Russia uh, will be destroyed by nuclear bombs. I guess NATO is going to uh, launch their missiles in Western Russia. He said the destruction of Western Russia. So let me, um, let me read about United States, what's going to happen to United States according to this dream. The destruction of the United States in Western Europe. He says, in August of 1980, I was a pastor in the Oklahoma congregation and worked uh, in Christian radio. I had a four hour program, but I was still bored. And I asked and heard the radio station, can I resign? The person who was preaching on the radio said at the time he was talking about the destruction of America. The vision that came to him of this destruction when the war between um, when a uh, when the war between America and Russia arrives, he showed me the cities that were going to be destroyed. And I thought he was crazy. I got mad at him and I was 27 years, years old at the time. Uh, maybe you should think the same now. It says it was then that he described in detail everything that I was angry with him about. But now I know why God told me to work a little bit longer at the radio station so I could find out this information. All right, these are the these are the cities in America that God showed this man 
back in 1980, that's 21 years ago that Russia would destroy uh, in this coming war right now, this war that we are fixing to get involved in in less than a week probably. All right, he's, here are the cities. He said the first one is Washington, and I think that's Washington, D.C. Uh, he said, God showed me which areas and cities in America that will be destroyed during this war. Washington, Columbia, two nuclear bombs dropped there. Baltimore, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, New York City, three nuclear bombs dropped there. Boston, Massachusetts, Chicago, Illinois, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, Detroit, Michigan, Los Angeles, California, San Francisco, California, also nuclear bombs there. Uh, he said, uh, yeah, Detroit, Michigan. He also said that uh, uh, Europe uh, will be decimated, especially England would be destroyed in this war that's coming up in just a few days or weeks. So um, this is very significant. This prophecy was given to this guy over 20 years ago. I will leave uh, a copy of this prophecy in the uh, in the comment section when this video is uploaded, so you can read it in, in its entirely uh, entirety, uh, and because it is quite lengthy. So I wanted to bring you this, but like I said, Jesus Christ is coming back, folks. He's coming back soon. I don't know uh, how long you want to wait. But uh, the Bible says if you die in your sins, then God has no other choice than, than to send you to hell. Jesus told us about all these things that were going to happen in Matthew 24. His disciples asked him, tell us, Master, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of that coming? And Jesus told them you would hear of wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, volcanoes, famines. That's the tribulation period. We are in the book of Revelation right now. Some people believe that we're not in the tribulation pe uh, period. Yes, we are, folks. This is the first three and a half years of the tribulation. We are in the tribulation, the first part of the tribulation. The mark of the beast here. The Antichrist could be revealed. There's a Jewish man right now in Israel that the rabbis say this could be their Messiah. We're on the verge of World War III. Why do you call that? I call that tribulation. This is not the wrath of God. The wrath of God is the last three and a half years. But the first three and a half years is the man-made tribulation. Wars of rumors of wars. Pestilences. Bioweapons release. Famine. That's what we're going through or about to go through on the earth right now. Jesus told us about all these things. He told us so you could prepare and you could believe in him. Jesus Christ is coming back at the Battle of Armageddon. This is not the Battle of Armageddon, folks. The Battle of Armageddon is the last battle when the nations of the world come against Israel to try to destroy Israel. This is World War III. This is completely different. This is the war that's going to take the United States off the map as a world power. Armageddon comes at the end when Jesus Christ comes back to defend Israel. This is all happening right now. If you don't know Jesus Christ and you die, there's no hope for you. If you take the mark of the beast, which is here now in the world, and they're doing this all around the world, and without this mark, you won't be able to buy or sell, the book of Revelation says. You won't be able to get on an airplane. You won't be able to go to school. You won't be able to go shopping. You won't be able to keep your job. They have businesses right now telling, telling their employees, you got to take it. I call that uh, fulfilling the book of Revelation. All this happening right now. So there's a lot to think about. If you're not 100% sure that if you die today, you would go to heaven and you want to make sure if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have kept putting God off, if you've kept pushing God aside, now is the time to get right with God, folks. You might not have another chance. I keep telling people. Death comes suddenly. You don't get a warning. When an accident happens, you fall off a ladder and hit your head. You don't get a warning. You're walking across the street. 
and a car runs out and hits you and mows you over, you don't get a warning. Death does not give you a warning unless you have cancer or some other disease like that. Usually death happens suddenly. You don't have a chance to repent, but you do right now. Jesus is calling to you right now. Time is growing short. Don't push me away. I love you. I gave my life for you. Don't reject me any longer. Your soul depends on where or who you make a decision for. Are you going to reject me over and over again and I'll have to send you to hell? Or are you going to accept me? That's what Jesus is talking to you. He's trying to tell you. He's trying to reach you. But many people think that God is just some fairy tale. There is no God. Jesus was a, a, a figure made up. No, folks. Jesus Christ is real. He's coming back. His disciples never would have preached the gospel if they had not seen Jesus rise from the dead. If Jesus would have stayed in that grave and never rose from the dead, his disciples would have just scattered. They wouldn't preach the gospel. They wouldn't have died for their faith. But Jesus did rose from the dead, rise from the dead. He appeared to them many times. He showed them the holes in his wrist and in his feet and in his side where the soldier pierced his side. He gave them instructions to go to uh, to the upper room till the Holy Ghost fell on them and endued them with power in the book of Acts. And they went out from that room and they turned the world upside down because Jesus Christ is real. He's coming back. Right now, he's your savior, but he's going to be your judge. If you reject him, he's going to be your judge. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, all God wants is you to be honest because all sin will be judged. If you're a sinner and you die in your sins, then you will be judged for your sins and God will have no other choice than to send you to hell. But God did make a way out for us. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life. Your church can't save you. Your denomination will not save you. Your good works will not save you. Your wife, your pastor, your mother will not save you. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can cover your sins and wash them away. So if you want to get it straight, if you want to get born again, if you're not sure 100% that you'd go to heaven if you die, say this prayer and really mean it, folks, and God will meet you right there wherever you're at. Just say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you right now, Lord, to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I believe that you are the son of God. And I believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood for me. And I believe that you rose again on the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And thank you, Jesus, for forgiving all of my sins and washing them away with your precious blood. Amen. You know, the Bible says that you must be born again, that your name must be written into the book of life. God keeps a record of everything that you have ever done since birth, every thought, every action. You cannot hide anything from God. He's kept a complete record of your whole life. And there's one book that your name must be present in before you can enter into heaven. And that is the book of life. And the only way to get into the book of life is to repent of your sins and ask forgiveness. Ask Jesus to cover your sins with his blood. That is only, that's the only thing that makes you righteous before God. See, the Jews don't believe in Jesus. They believe that he was a prophet, but they don't believe that he was the Messiah because the Jews are looking for two messiahs. Not just one. Jesus is the two messiahs. Jesus came first as the Lamb of God to die for the sins of the world. And he's coming back as the King of kings and Lord of lords, the conquering king. Je Jesus is the Lamb and also the Lion. The Jews rejected Jesus. That's why they're going to accept this new messiah when he comes on the scene 
as their Mashiach. They've been waiting for him for over 3,000 years since Moses. God sent Jesus, but they rejected him. They took Barabbas instead. And they're going to miss him again until the Battle of Armageddon. And then God will open their eyes and they will see whom they have pierced. And then they will turn to Jesus as their Savior. God has never abandoned the Jewish people. God said that the Jewish people is the apple of his eye. God promised Abraham to a thousand generations that he would protect and love the Jewish people to a thousand generations. God has not abandoned Israel. And God will never abandon Israel. We have been grafted in as Christians into the vine. Jesus was a Jew. Jesus preached to the Jewish people. But we have been grafted into that vine. So now we can partake with the Jewish people all the blessings that Jesus has given us. So time is short, folks. Um, all these events are happening very quickly now. Since last year, since 2020, since this virus broke out in China, the world has changed. The world is never going back to normal. Everything is accelerating in the world. In the Bible, it says that these days would be shortened. Otherwise, no flesh would be saved upon the earth. God has to shorten the days. Otherwise, all these events that are happening right now, no flesh, no human flesh would be saved upon the earth. I don't know how much time we have left, but I know that the time that God has given us, we need to, as Christians, go out and bear fruit for Jesus Christ. Take up our cross daily. Make it your point to tell somebody what's happening in the earth, folks. Share our videos out. Please share our videos out. I don't get on here like Paul Begley or Dave Hodges or these other commentators. I don't sell any products on my program. I don't have a sponsor. I don't sell anything. I don't ask for money. I do ask, please share my videos out so other people can, can get this information and get the gospel preached to them, folks. This is very important. Time is running out. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians that there would be a great falling away before the man of sin is revealed. Well, the man of sin might be revealed coming up here in a couple of weeks, folks. If this rabbi that they're promoting, if this guy ends up to be their false messiah, I don't know if he is or not. I still think it's uh, another guy. I don't think it's this gentleman here. I think it's got to be a world leader. But if this gentleman is here, then that's going to fulfill Second Thessalonians. So I want to thank you guys for showing up. You guys uh, have been great. We got Beck from Oz, Stuka Velokovic. Um, you know, and I will leave all these links in the description box. If any other breaking news comes uh, up, I'll try to break in tonight. So you guys have a great day. Uh, uh, share our videos out and uh, let people know, folks. God bless you, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.